Welcome to Christ Church. I'm glad you're joining us. Good morning. My name is Charles Jenkins. I'm the Associate Priest for Pastoral Care here at Christ Church Episcopal in Greenville, South Carolina. We welcome you to worship this morning, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. We have resumed live worship on Sunday mornings at 9 and 11. Reservations are required for those and are limited to 100 people per service. I encourage you to check out our website for more details. Also, Sunday School resumes this morning with a variety of options. They are all listed on our website, and I encourage you to check them out. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in the honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in the honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, 
Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went away and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they, were, they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In last week's homily, I spoke about the importance of how we as Christians deal with conflict. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus outlines how we should go about seeking to resolve conflict amongst each other. In many respects, outlining a process is much easier than having the task to preach on the expected outcome of said process. As fate would have it, I get to preach again this week, and I have the task of briefly talking about what the outcome of resolved conflict should look like. In our gospel today, Jesus paints a picture for us as to what the outcome of settling conflict should look like. And that is forgiveness. I wonder how many of us would be willing to say that forgiveness is an easy act to accomplish. This is a hard one for us. Because when we feel as if we have been wronged, there's a lot more emotion tied to the situation. Especially when it involves loved ones. We are often more than just angry. We are also usually hurt. And when those feelings of anger and hurt are mixed, they often turn into grudges that last and linger. I know that speaking from personal experience, we oftentimes say and do the most hurtful things to the ones we love the most. In the heat of an argument, we say things we don't necessarily mean, and our comments and responses become exaggerated to the point that what we are saying deeply hurts the individual they are directed towards. But that's the point, right? We want to inflict a greater sense of hurt and anger that caused us to lash out in the first place. This feeling for me is sickening, and I confess that I have been guilty of it. But what I have learned is that by trying to win the argument, the pain I inflict on loved ones is pain I also inflict on myself. 
And when I see myself walking down that awful and dreaded path, I try to stop, swallow my pride, and ask for forgiveness. It's not easy admitting you are wrong when you feel like you have been wronged. But in doing so, my hope is that the relationship can be restored. And the point of conflict can ultimately be dealt with and resolved in the end. Emotion is raw when it comes to conflict. And we as a faith community need to be nurtured and built up rather than weakened and torn down. In our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus speaks to the necessity of forgiveness because he knows the effects unforgiveness has on both individuals and the community. There are so many situations within our world, within our society, in our workplaces, in our church, and even in our families, as I mentioned, that when not dealt with can sow seeds of bitterness and fester into deep and painful wounds. Often we don't really want to forgive someone or even ask for forgiveness, even though we know we should. There are so many reasons we invent within our minds to not forgive. Perhaps there are feelings and desires of revenge. Perhaps we want the person who has hurt us to pay for what we have experienced. Or perhaps it's purely pride that gets in the way. Again, I admit the business of forgiveness is not an easy one. Forgiveness is not a matter of putting the other person on probation, just waiting for them to do something wrong again so that we can take it back. And forgiveness is certainly not an excuse for unjust behavior. At the heart of the action, forgiveness means to release, though it certainly doesn't mean to forget. Some events and situations we should never forget. Things such as slavery, the Holocaust, exploitation of women and children, the infidelity of a spouse, a lie that turned your life upside down, abuse, betrayal, the list goes on. Forgiveness, without a doubt, is a hard and radical choice where we make the choice to leave behind our resentment and desire for retaliation, however fair such punishment may seem to be. Note, the wrongful behavior remains condemned, but the offender is released from its effects as far as the forgiver is concerned. By doing this, by doing what seems to be so impossible, we release ourselves from the power of bondage the original wound held over us. I would be naive and unrealistic if I told you that all the feelings of anger and hurt just disappeared when we seek and give forgiveness. They don't. But we can experience the richness of God's grace and mercy by seeking to be made whole again through the ministry of healing. If healing is something you are interested in, talk to me. Talk to one of the other clergy, as we have a vital healing ministry here at Christ Church through the Order of St. Luke. As we go into this week, I encourage you to think about someone you need to forgive and someone who you need to ask forgiveness from. I can tell you there is nothing more powerful than to look somebody in their eyes, admit your wrongdoing, and to ask for forgiveness. And equally so. There is nothing more powerful than to be able to forgive somebody when they come to you and admit their wrongdoings. More times than not, it may first feel like eating a big old slice of humble pie, but that healing that begins at that moment of forgiveness is life-giving. May we live into those words which many of us learned as a child in which we say time and time again, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us.
let us affirm our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, form three, begin on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Donald, our president, Henry, our governor, Knox, our mayor, and the Congress and the courts. For all who serve in our armed forces and their families. We pray for victims of all natural disasters, especially those who have suffered as a result of the recent hurricane and earthquake for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus, for comfort for those grieving loved ones who have died, and peace for those who are fearful as the virus spreads, for those in isolation, for those who have lost their job or their business, and for all those in our communities involved in ministering to the sick, especially for all health care workers, and for those on our parish prayer list. Finally, let us bring to God all of our petitions and thanksgivings using the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.